Okay, so we're going to set up a universal counting leader here using some of our own images. So here's how it works. You'll notice I've got in my project panel over here, I've got num uh, videos numbered 2 through 10. And you'll see as I click through those that this is not a number 3, but it looks like a number 3. And this here, it's not a number 4, but it kind of looks like a number 4. So you've gone out, you've shot those videos, you've got numbers 2 through 10, and you're ready to get started. So here's how it will work. We'll actually start with the number 8 and you'll understand why in just a little bit. So I'll find in this number eight, I'm actually gonna use just exactly one second of it, so 29 frames. So you'll see if I move my playhead to 29 frames and set an out point right there, you'll see that I'm selecting exactly one second of that video. I'm then gonna take this video, click, hold, and drag to the new item icon, and that will set up exactly one second of that video over in my source monitor. And because I've set, it, set up this sequence, and it's now called sequence number eight, I'm going to rename it last name underscore countdown. But because I've set up this, uh, I'll spell countdown correctly. Because I've set up this sequence with my video, you'll notice the settings match. I've got uh, 16 by 9 widescreen over here, 16 by 9 widescreen over there. I'm going to take this and drag it out of that folder so that I have my numbers folder there and I've got my last name underscore countdown there. Now I'm going to set up a universal counting leader, now that I've got my sequence set up. The way I do that is from this new item icon, I choose universal counting leader. I can leave all my settings here as they are, click OK. In here, I want to make sure that I, all three of these boxes are checked, so I got cube lips on, on all eight seconds. And then I can change some colors in here, so you might want to do something kind of fun to do something maybe Christmassy or maybe you know you decide however you want to do it uh, and then I'll click OK once I've got that set how I want and now I'll see that my universal counting leader shows up down here in my project panel and I'm going to take that and I'm going to drag it to video track 2 at the very beginning so I'll see now I've got in video track 2 and audio track 2 I've got my counting leader and I can twirl those down and see the thumbnail, I can see my audio blips, those are my audio blips there. And I see that 8 is underneath the beginning of it, that's not where I want it, but in order to see through it, I'm going to go ahead and take this yellow line that's on video track 2, that's my opacity, right now it's at 100%, and I'm going to drag it down to about 30%, so you can see 30.76. So now you notice here, I can see through my video track 2, and I can see video track one underneath it. Now if I move my playhead down here and I slowly go down, you'll see at some point, there's no number 10, there's no number 9, but at some point I get to a number 8. And it's actually, you see where the audio is, it's right where that audio starts. There's a number 8. So right where that number 8 starts, the first frame that I see that number 8, I want to pull this number 8 right there. And you'll notice when I do that, if I use my arrow keys on my keyboard, and I click back an arrow, I don't see a number 8 uh, in track 1 or 2 there. And there, I see them in both tracks. So I'm going frame by frame. So if I click through this just on my keyboard, frame by frame, you'll see as I get to the end of number 8, as soon as I see number 7, I don't see that number 8 anymore. So now you're going to go through here, and you're going to do the same thing. Take this to 29 frames set an out point, you'll see kind of the number seven right there. And now I don't have to drag this to the new sequence icon, I can drag it right to my timeline. And you'll see that now seven lines up, if I scrub through it, as soon as I don't see seven in the top one, I don't see it in the bottom. I'll do the same with six, set an out point, drag that down, five and you're just going through piece by piece and doing this now there's a couple numbers in here that are tricky uh, and those numbers are two nine and ten but if you do it this way I think it'll make good sense so here I'm down at number three now you'll notice if I scrub down to number three, all these are set up correctly, and I'll just double check in here, so I've got four, four, there we go, three, 
Now, as soon as it switches off three, I see number two, but I only see two in my counting leader for one frame. But I'm still going to set it up the same way so I can see it underneath. And I'll clear my in and out points here. I'll set this to exactly 29 and I'll pull that down. So I know that that's showing for a second. I'm going to do the same thing even though there's no 9 or 10 here in my counting uh, leader. I still want to put in 9 and 10. So I'll take 9. Uh, I've already got that set up to one second. So I'll take that down to right there. And then 10. I'll set this up to one second. And I'll take that down to right there. So now what I have in my video is I have an 11 second video, right? I have the first uh, second of it is just I see the, you know, uh, here, splice, that. The second second I see my 10. And then third second I see my 9. And then it goes 8 through 2. And my last second is just black. So that's my 11 second video. Now, let's talk about audio. Because you can see down here that I've got these audio blips. But they only go for seconds 2 through 8, right? Or numbers 2 through 8. I don't, as part of your assignment, you don't need one at number 1, but you do need one at numbers 9 and 10. Now, here's the trick if you haven't already figured it out. You can take this universal counting leader and you can uh, pull th just the audio, or you can actually do it like this. If you unlink this, well, let's do it this way. Take this universal counting leader and drag another copy of it to video 3. And then we're going to unlink. So we'll right click on it, choose unlink. And then we can just delete this top one. So now we've got the audio in here in audio track 3. And we'll see that the audio lines up exactly. I'm going to take this audio and I'm going to trim it back to, you know, about there. You know, I'm past the first three blips. So now we won't see those first three blips. Now I'm going to pull this down and line up that, you know, let's see, that second blip. Now, right there, it looks like it's pretty close to perfect. I want to make sure that it's really perfect. So I'm going to put my playhead close to one of those blips and I'm going to zoom way in. So you can see that lines up perfectly. Uh, if, it, if it didn't, you could kind of fine tune it in here. You can move this around and get it perfect. Then you can zoom way back out. And now, to get those audio blips at the first two spots, I can just trim back to there, even a little farther, <clears throat> and then trim this back to there. And now you'll see, if I play this all the way through, that I have an audio blip at 10 and 9, Eight seven six five four three two, and that's looking pretty nice. Now I'm ready to export. So it's as simple as me clicking up here, my program monitor, and doing a Control M or File Export Media, choosing Windows Media. You don't want to do AVI because it's it'll be, be a really large file. So you do Windows Media. I'll click this to define where I'm going to save it. Uh, I'll go into, you, you'll go into your uh, finished video folder. In my case, I'm going to go into uh, a countdown challenge folder. And I'll rename it countdown. I've already saved it there, but I'll click export. In this case, I'll have to replace it. But that will now export that to that countdown folder. And it'll be a quick one because it's only 11 seconds long. And then you'll upload to Google Drive and submit it to your instructor.